Wait, remember Super Robot Monkey Team Hyperforce Go? I mean, help with a title like that. Good old Surmfthunj. As I have been recently taking the plunge back into the JetX library, I have been wanting to tackle this one for quite some time. For some reason, I just keep making videos that relate back to robots. That being said, yes, a Cubix video is on the way. Super Robot Monkey Team Hyperforce Go... Oh, uh, no, no, no. For the sake of my sanity and this video, unless I need to, we are referring to this show as Super Robot Monkey. Maybe a team thrown in there for good measure sometimes. Can we all agree on that right now at the start? Cool. Thanks. Running for 52 episodes over four seasons, Super Robot Monkey Team was the first original show produced specifically for the JetX block of content. For all of the JetX channels around the world. JetX! No, that's a JetX. We're talking about JetX. But what Super Robot Monkey Team set out to do is answer one question. What if the Power Rangers were actually a team of robot monkeys? Yeah, that's actually the best way I can put it. Video over. Thanks for watching. Oh, you wanted you wanted more? Okay, fine. Roll the intro. Now a word from our sponsor. Thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring today's video. Surfshark VPN is a virtual private network that helps you secure your digital life in turn helping your real life by putting your worries at ease. Surfshark offers one of the best full coverage VPN packages out there with an unlimited number of devices that can all run under one subscription, all at the same time. Seriously, as many devices as you want. The Surfshark app itself is available on all platforms, PC, Mac, and of course the Linux users out there, you're covered as well. Even smart TVs and video game consoles. Consoles, all along with 24-7 live customer support and a full 30-day money-back guarantee to make sure you know it's completely risk-free by giving them a shot, as well as one of the best security measures with their strictly no-logs policy which encrypts your data, meaning that they do not keep any of it, nor does anyone know what you're doing online. Want to watch something that isn't streaming in your country? And <laughs> No worries, just connect to any of the servers Surfshark has around the world and boom, you can access streaming libraries of even more content that otherwise would not be available in your country. It's fast, and it's easy to use, filled with features that go beyond just the basics with a regular VPN. If you want to protect yourself online while browsing, as well as help support the channel, you can get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deal slash jordanfringe, and enter promo code jordanfringe for 83% off and an extra three months for free. So click the link down below in the description and get protected today. You gonna talk all day or do this? The word Shugazoom mean anything to you? Well, picture a planet, where in which there is only one large city, and the rest is comprised of barren wastelands. In this city, Shugazoom City, on the planet Shugazoom, we follow our main protagonist, Chiro, a boy who, when exploring the outer limits of the city, found himself a frozen in time, seemingly abandoned robot becoming one with the nature around it. Due to his curious nature, he took a look inside of it, flipped the switch, got some ghost powers. Oh, sorry, I thought I was reading the wrong script here. Chiro then discovers what seems to be a bunch of stasis tanks that bring back the consciousness of five robot monkeys of the super variety. But Chiro was changed from this now becoming one with the Power Primate, a supernatural form of energy that gives him a signature combat outfit and strength and bravery, and to ultimately be the leader of the Super Robot Monkey Team. Naturally, of course. The team consisting of Sparks, or SPRX-77, the semi-jokester, ladies man, ladies monkey, ladies monkey man bot? I don't know, he digs the chicks. But don't let his love distractions fool you. He's the best pilot on the team and a major asset in combat. He has these big magnet fists, if you couldn't tell. He helps bring out a lot of the comedy in the show and becomes a distraction in some cases for Chiro's focus. He's also voiced by Corey Feldman, of all people. Antari, the second in command for the group, focuses on a clear mind and calculated strategies when it comes to training and fighting the enemies, as well as how he passes off his wisdom and ideals to Chiro. He's more serious than he is a goofball, but he can still find fun in the moments in between. His main move set relies on his signature ghost claws. He is voiced by Kevin Michael Richardson. Also having this certain robot look of the more black and some gray in seasons one and two, and for seasons three and four, it would be more silver than black, but that's for a big story-related reason. There's Nova, and well, she's the frontline fighter of the group, tough but not emotionless, as she serves as the core of the team and more specifically Chiro. Nova plays into the deeper overall plot 
plot of the show relating back to the Skeleton King, we will get back to him later. Nova has the powers of her big robot fists ready to take on any challenge. She is voiced by Carrie Walgren. Next is Gibson, the smartest one of the bunch, as he is the team scientist. Most of the time, he focuses on his experiments that lead to great discoveries, and sometimes the detriment of the whole group. This doesn't mean that he isn't ready for a fight as he has these powerful Cybovac drills. And on top of that, he's voiced by SpongeBob himself, Tom Kenny. Last but not least is Otto, the mechanic of the team with an unparalleled mind when it comes to understanding how things work and fixing things up. Technically, he would also be the group's healer as well, since they themselves are robotic and he repairs when necessary. If there were a class clown, Otto would be it. His weapons of choice are his holy mackerel freaking energy saws? That's so cool! And he's voiced by Clancy Brown. That's so cool! Chiro himself is a teenager gifted now with the abilities of the aforementioned Power Primate, and is now the leader of the Hyperforce here. After coming to terms with his potential destiny, he fumbles his way through being the strong leader he was meant to be. He's not perfect, he hasn't mastered the role he now inhabits. We see him learn and overcome constantly throughout the series as he discovers the powers he can wield and the leader he is positioned to be. Voiced by Greg Sipes, he fosters all these strong bonds with the team connecting more with the group as their time together progresses. Some fun, some sweet. There are some other characters of great note to look at, like Jin Mei, a robot girl who becomes a member of the Hyperforce at one point to help protect the city. She is voiced by Ashley Johnson and adds in a hopeful yet determined demeanor to the group, with her having to deal with her own strengths and honing them, as well as her relationship with Chiro. The Sunriders, who at first are the idols that Chiro looks up to, and when they first encounter one another, they are actually the bad guys, but upon later appearances become mutuals to aid in battle. They have their own set of powers like Super Quasar, who can shoot solar energy, Johnny Sunspot, who can control and manipulate black holes, and Aurora Six, well, she's got a gun. A sun gun. They acquired these powers thanks to the Skeleton King when they were working for him. Captain Sugazoom, an older defender of the city who basically has the same identity as Batman, who was this wealthy playboy businessman, but then was frozen in time for 60 years during a battle, and is brought back by the city's own super robot monkey team hyperforce, Go. He's even cooler when you know it's Bruce Campbell who voiced him. He basically served as inspiration into what Chiro can be. But that's just our main man and robot monkey friends and associates. Let's see what evil these heroes must face. What is that? Some kind of wonky jungle rat? Super Robot Monkey Team Hyper Force Go is coming up next on JetX. Check out Antari and the rest of the monkeys in the original series. Part of Genex. The Skeleton King, the show's main evil bad dude. Yeah, he's pretty cool looking though. Skeleton King is beyond this little thing called world domination and is on to full universal domination, starting with our one city planet here, Sugazoom. Before Darth Femur over here is who he is now, this undead war wreaker. He was the alchemist, a combiner of elements able to fuse both science and magic. He was the creator of the super robot monkey team in pursuit of helping helping Captain Sugazoom, and fully creating what the Hyperforce was. This was until one fateful event caused the Dark Ones to take out the Alchemist. Upon his return, his soul was now tainted with the evils of the Dark Ones and beyond. Now pulling the strings, he creates quite the hardships for the Super Robot Monkey Team to face, mainly his endless army of formless minions, even being as evil to go all Freddy Krueger on them and psychologically torment them, also corrupting them if he saw a chance to listen. He does some crazy stuff in this show, but what's even crazier? is he is voiced by Mark Hamill. I mean, of course, no wonder it's so great. Valina's also really cool. She's known as the Skull Sorceress. Oddly enough, I go by the Summon Skull in my real life. Voiced by Hinden Walsh, her role in the show is basically that of a minion to the Skeleton King. He entrusts her with the powers of a sorceress to have her do his bidding and work on bringing him back to the mortal world by resurrecting him. Wow, I bet if she succeeded, she'd be treated to nothing but a proud Skeleton King praising her. All right. And then of course, the other piece of the puzzle, Mandarin, the original sixth robot monkey who donned an orange look with a sick energy sword and shield. He was the leader of the team way back when and struggled with his anger issues getting the better of him, making him a tough fighter, but a struggling leader. He was also the one that eventually causes the incident where the alchemist gets attacked by the dark ones. He was eventually sent packing by the rest of the robot monkey team after his temptations of power became untamable and the team didn't align with him. He himself was also in stasis when he was accidentally freed by Chiro. Later on, the Skeleton King finds him and again, don't forget how evil jacked Skellington over here is. 
And look, I'm not saying he murdered that monkey, but after he clones him to release Mandarin 2, well, you tell me where he went. Mandarin 2, however, retains all the memories that he originally would have had, and now struggles with even more morality issues. Overall, a conflicted character that, in need of surviving, pledges loyalty to the wrong side, aiding and attacking the Hyperforce. Mandarin is voiced by James Hong. With a mixture of fun, colorful, and well-detailed animation, as well as the landscapes, the show pours out a palette that makes every scene pop in its own way, designing nice, unique looks for all of the main characters and villains especially. Seriously, this show looks phenomenal. So aside from the incredible voice talent stacking this cast, there was a whole lot of talent behind the scenes as well. The show was created by C. Ro Neely, a director, producer, and designer in the industry who has previously worked on shows like Mucha Lucha and Teen Titans. In an era where a lot of Western shows were borrowing influence from other famed media, not just in the at the time zeitgeist, but the anime influence from Japan was pouring over more and more into every form of media. The anime influence felt on this show is palpable, from the stylized action, to the mechs, to the scene transitions. Clearly the first thing you may notice when seeing the robot monkeys are their colors, resembling the Power Rangers. Even having them all work together to pilot a super robot just like the Power Rangers do with Megazord. The show also took inspiration from major properties such as Star Wars, Star Trek, and even Voltron. And that's just amongst the most notable. Lynn Naylor, who has worked on stuff like Samurai Jack, My Life as a Teenage Robot, and Hi Hi Puffy Amiumi, just to name a few, joined on as the show's character designer, helping to give the show its similar in feeling but unique look. Her husband, Chris Riccardi, who wrote for shows like Samurai Jack, The Powerpuff Girls, and even the My Life as a Teenage Robot TV movie special, Escape from Cluster Prime, joined the show as an assistant director. There was lots of talent within the team for this project. Super Robot Monkey Team Hyperforce Go would premiere during Jetix's programming block on ABC Family on September 18th, 2004. Toon Disney would also play this show on their channel's Jetix block, and would be the only place to exclusively do so in the US once ABC Family stopped showing the Jetix block of content in the late summer of 2006. Neely would later go on to lead the creative team for Nickelodeon's 2012 version of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So, as a cool achievement, he was able to work on properties for the big three cartoon stations on TV. Cartoon Network, Disney, and Nickelodeon. At least, I think that's pretty cool. As for our Robot Monkey Team show, and by the way, massive spoilers here, the show ends on quite the cliffhanger when in which the bad guys actually win by resurrecting the Skeleton King and the big setup for this major war brewing. Things genuinely looked like a solid ending was brewing that we have been building up to for four seasons. And then there are no more episodes. The show was officially canceled. And sadly, that was the end for Super Robot Monkey Team Hyperforce Go. We all failed to stop Skeleton King. King. We'll be right back to Super Robot Monkey Team Hyperforce Go on JetX. Now back to Super Robot Monkey Team Hyperforce Go on JetX. Wait. Do you remember that time that we all got hinted at a potential comeback of that show? Well, actually, hey, hey, wait a moment. I asked the wait, remember questions around here. Who said that? I did. Holy scripted encounter, Batman. It's D'Angelo from Hats Off Media. So are we done with this back and forth segue and I can talk about the show or... Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Go, go on. Thank you. Like I was saying, the show had some reach beyond its years on TV thanks to a fan base that didn't forget about it. In an interview with the show's creator, Ciro Neely, he elaborated on the chance for a continuation of the series saying, there's a finale planned for that, and I don't know how I'm gonna do it, but I swear I'm gonna do it someday. I can do it as one movie, or I can do it as a whole season. It just depends on how much breath I wanna give it. Like, look at the last episode. You can either pick it up from there, or you can go five years later. It's the War of the Undead versus the Robot Chimps. It's this crazy battlefield where all forces have kinda teamed up against the ultimate evil. It'd be awesome. It's all figured out pretty much. This interview took place back in December of 2014, with nothing new mentioned or done for the show after. From what he did say though, shows that he still has a passion to end the show in a big way for the fans, whether that be in a one-off new season or a full-on movie. Saying he has it all figured out is nice to hear. It shows that there's been plenty of thought given to the show post-cancellation within its creator. The show ended on a cliffhanger for the fourth season as mentioned earlier, with reasons pointing to merchandise-related issues. Which, if that's true, it's a shame that a show, no matter how the reception, will usually come down to the studio not selling enough t-shirts and action figures to go along with it. Neely went on saying, Everyone bugs me about it all the time, and I really want to sit down and tell everybody what happens, but I'd rather just make it someday. 
and give it to them. Worst case scenario, before I die, I'll do a perfect graphic novel of it. And then Disney can sue me posthumously because they now completely own it. And that's how it goes. He would go on to make some light ribbing on the fact that he could just do it and just change their names and some designs to get away with it. But it would be cool to see where his plans for the show were leading to. Maybe without the gravitas of his worst case scenario though. So Disney isn't going to do anything with this property, are they? Probably not, but they at least put it on Disney Plus back in 2020 in the crop 4-3 ratio and not the full HD 16-9 ratio. Oh, Disney. You never disappoint. Well, thanks for covering all that. Maybe one day we can finally see the full version of the series, but as for now, four seasons and a cliffhanger is all we got. But to take away the anxiousness of the cliffhanger, the show itself was a blast. Gen X took the action cartoons to another level with this show, seemingly setting up the blueprint for how action cartoons can be handled under this new banner. And I think it's also why Jet X is so memorable for shows like this. Now, as we've mentioned before, that Disney XD was the overall end game for what Jet X was molded into and became the home for the exclusive Jet X content, this is where it would live until it eventually didn't. This show had some pretty grand ideas that pack more weight between the character interactions than what it seems like on the surface. Oh, sorry, were you not expecting the heavy weight of sad outcomes, consequences, and crushing defeat to be littered throughout the colorful, silly, robot, monkey, mech-fighting Disney show? Well, it's full of moments that leave a major impact on the story. Characters feel like they are living through these more grim moments. Characters even die, like major characters, and don't come back. Kind of. Not only was it surprising to see what this show pushed for and got away with, but how it was executed within its medium and target audience. The effects can be felt, the characters feel fleshed out, and this whole one major city feels a lot more fleshed out than you'd think. And I really think that contributes to why it feels so alive. The time spent in developing every aspect of the show. And now when it comes to the home entertainment side of things, there was no official video game released for it. I believe there were plans with THQ, but as far as I I know and what I can find out there, it's nothing more than just a myth. But you know, there has to be some web-based games you can play, like Monkey Dash, a kinda endless on-rails shooter where you fight the formless enemies, and then Mission Alpha Monkeys Mobilize, where you play as the different monkeys in their separated vehicular weapons as you try to save Shugazoom City. But hey, at least at the end of the day, I can flip open my Game Boy Advance SP and watch some Super Robot Monkey Team Hyperforce Go thanks to Game Boy Advance Video. Super Robot Monkey Team Hyperforce Go can be silly. It can be crass, but at the end of the day, it kicks a whole bunch of asking the question to you now. What are your thoughts on this show? Were you a big fan of it, and would you like to see a final season or an ending movie that completes the creator's original vision? Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching, and thanks so much to D'Angelo of Hats Off Media for stopping by today to discuss the show. Thanks for having me on, Jordan. Can I call you Jordan? Actually, I don't. Well, too bad, because I'm gonna. My name is D'Angelo Edwards, and I run a channel called Hats Off Media where I take my hat off to any form of media I feel deserves it. From cartoons to manga to movies, I do it all. Though right now my main focus are action cartoons. If you want a good example of the kind of stuff I make, you can check out my video on Megas XLR and how Cartoon Network basically sabotaged it. Or if you're still up for some monkey business, you can check out my video on the Hyperforce. I also have a video on Symbionic Kaiden going up soon that you won't want to miss. And if you like art, you might like mine, which you can find on my Twitter, also at Hats Off Media. Drop by and stay a while, as if you have a choice. Make sure to check out their channel as well. Also make sure to hit the like button and subscribe on this channel for more content like this. I'll be back with another video soon, but until then, later.